Hello everyone, this is Mr. I don't know, I guess I'll call myself Silent Thid Good SketchUp videos. Um, and I am going to go through here something to try to post out to this discussion of how do you deal with a void in a sphere. And I don't expect this to be right. I would point out that out on Sketchucation or out on the Sketch Warehouse, there's a, a, a nice cool Dutch gentleman that's done some pretty wild Rubik's Cubes and the like. So what I'm going to look at here is how to how you can think about going and, and breaking up the ball. So I'm going to go ahead right here and uh, break up this ball. So I'm going to stick a ball here. I'm holding the shift key as I pull this. How are you hitting the control key in a Windows machine? Breaking that up, holding that, taking that ball, and now going to view and turning on the hidden geometry. And you can get a general idea here. Now, if you notice when I place that, um, what we're going to be trying to do is break this ball up into, even though you could do slices, which we'll do in a later video, I'm going to break that ball up into um, pieces. And those pieces, if you think about this ball having a definition at the hemisphere, are going to be one, two, three, four, five, something like six um, different shaped, um, if you would, um, kind of wedges, right? key here is you're going to be trying to make this into something that's a convex hull. Now what I think will occur is you can write a, notice here that this is actually not a ball, it's a little bit flat there. So let's see how we can do that. Well right away we're going to go ahead and turn on x-ray camera. One of the great things about SketchUp is the ability to change the edge style, face style to x-ray. And with that said, now believe it or not I can dig through this model See how it went back to the origin there? And I'm going to try to just grab that one. And I'm going to just go over the top. It'll be easier for me just to go around to there. Go back to the middle. Now go from there to there to there. Back. And once I finally know, go from here to there. And from there to there. I basically have that wedge made. Uh, with that one there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that wedge, right click, uh, make a group I guess, even though I won't, I'm going to move it out to the side here. So I've got one of those, that's fine. Now I would have should have left it around so I'm going to go, um, but I, I got one of those made and eventually you're going to see you're going to make that a group. So that was the kind of the first one I'm guessing and I'm going to do an edit, undo, move, all right, so I want to start right there, and so just to keep track of myself. Um, someone's going to correct me on how I'm doing this, I'm sure, but I'm going to just keep going through here, and you can edit the video. Learn how to zoom things forward in these things. So once again, you can grab the center. I'm going to grab that one to that one to that one. Now, if you notice there, it did grab it made a face but I couldn't really grab it now I'm gonna go again I'm gonna go from this one to this one to the edge and back and then from here to there and so I did that one a little bit differently same thing again I'm gonna keep track erase and the next one I'm gonna do with the top right corner is gonna be there and so now I'm gonna take this thing and you notice I can move these out and about pretty much um, hitting it an alt key, control key. What I didn't do is to make a group. Learning in SketchUp how to make groups quickly. Always making groups and then taking them apart. And then one of the key things, uh, SketchUp, and we'll we'll visit with a a, a, a brilliant SketchItian, uh, Jason Hall, coming up here soon, and he'll talk about uh, other ways to do this uh, more innately. But this sense of in SketchUp that you have to go ahead on a regular basis and make a lot of groups very early. Uh, also develop the habit of doing layers very early as well. Though you can see you can survive um, by not doing that for a while. And so now if you notice here is it's not grabbing these edges. So now it did. I'm hoping that it actually did close that up. So I'm going to once again go ahead and erase this. I'm going to go ahead here and just keeping track of going all the way up the ball. We're then eventually going to take right click, make a group, and then we're going to go ahead and move this thing out. So there's my third. We're in the top right. 
I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but I'm just kind of going to do it this way. One, two. Point being, later on we're going to see whether in fact we can scale these things up and down. That's one of the key things. Anytime you see a repeating shape, you make a component or a block. Another key thing in most of CAD, definitely most of math, most in life, is if you see something repeating, figure it's a block. I'm going to now, of course, I only got two left, so we're not doing bad in terms of how we're going to make this sphere eventually, and it's actually going to be somewhat solid once again. You notice by going left to right as opposed to right to left, the difference between a, a crossing and an interior window. My daughter was struggling with that yesterday, that if you go left to right, it is a everything inside, right to left, everything actually touching. Once again, make a group. It already is a group, so I'm going to go ahead, and it's not a group, so I'm going to once again here, right, you want to go right to left, right click, make a group. You'll later see that making a component is going to be a better idea because it does then key you into um, your a coordinate system. So we really don't know where the coordinate system is. In the end, most of these are going to really want to start there. We're going up, remember that was top right, there. So there, you're getting this conception, this, this sense of how to draft in 3D. Uh, AutoCAD Inventor kind of works either that way or you do a lot of work also in this world by drafting into what we'll call subspaces or a, basically a 2D plane that's part of a 3D world or a 1D plane or a line that's part of a, a 2D world. So again, right click make group take this out push it over here we're almost done we've only got the last one and this is going to be a weird space and we're going to go ahead and try it see what happens so I'm going to, I don't know why I'm marking that it's kind of stupid but I'm going to now do the last one which is going to be a triangular as opposed to we'll give these words later that to there to there back down from there to there to there there and now you see and then finally from there to there and now that last one we've got them all done erase erase right click make group and later on you'll see what I would really want to do in the end is make each of these no longer and we've got basically all the components of one kind of slice next thing we're gonna do is to go ahead and go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and even move this thing out. You notice I haven't exploded that. There's different ways to do this. Um, well, later on, you know, we'll talk about how different engines do this, but now I've got something. I'm going to want to make sure that each of these now are something called, so sketchy physics, group, shape change. You want them each to be convex holes. You also want to get really quick in terms of, as you look at those, realize that's not how they're going to be modeled. And my installation of sketchy physics here is not working so great. So as soon as I try to do physics in this, it blows up. But everything's kind of working okay. So I'm okay with, with it not running in this machine. Um, you don't want to be that way. Uh, keeping things current in a couple operating systems, a couple machines, um, especially because I've got Mathematica on here, which is also, these obviously are mathematical shapes. That's probably a more efficient way to do this. So let's said, let's put that together. These are three. They're not components. Eventually we'd make them components, but for now we're just going to do this. We're going to put them together, right? By taking that select tool, and then now we're just moving, which you don't very often do in SketchUp. Usually you're going to copy and then erase. You'll see why later. But when things are grouped, you can actually just move them. So I've got the second one there. Okay, I select, and you can just use the key in M for this. I'm going to grab there, go to here. And later on, you're going to see this isn't going to be everything we need to do this kind of goal of what I'm responding to out on the Sketchucation website. But it's kind of one way to make a sphere. Now, let's see. It sure doesn't look like it's going to work, but it's probably going to. I'm going to take this. And now I have now, this is a, right, one wedge. Now, if you think about, I'm not sure how this divided the world up, but I think it divided up the world into 12 hours. So I'm going to take all these things 
and not, this is not how you're going to do it in the end, but I'm going to grab, you always want to have and sketch up a plane around here so you can grab the 3D and you're going to twist this box and do lots of things to it. But now I'm going to take all this, these are convex holes, I'm going to take and then do select, tool, go, go to the face, hold the shift key. Now that plane is being held, I go to here and I'm going to take this and I'm going to do a copy rotate. So I'm going to go here. Now holding the control key, I'm going to turn it and I should know, I guess these are 22 and a half. Um, so 22 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say 10, 12, I don't know, 15 times. I don't know where the 22 and a half, 15 times. Um, I don't know that that's correct. I might have had a double hit. Oh, lost it there. Just lost my sketch up. There it is. Okay, so now I've got that. I'm just going to let that go for now. I'm going to go ahead now and eventually there'll be better ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the control key and shift that up. Okay, now same thing. Take this here. Better ways to do this? I know. Take that. Select. Rotate tool. Go to the face. Hold the shift key. I'll go to any place on here. Makes sense to do it there. I'm going to rotate that. And a better way to do this, just so you know, is to do a flip. I just have a problem with flip. And now once again, I'm going to take all that. And I'm going to take it down. All right. I will point out that I'm sure this is not perfect. Let's see. It should come straight down. I'm going to take it. If you notice, it'll grab the blue axis here. I'm going to do that first. Later on, you should know coordinates on things. I'm going to try it one more time. All those blue highlights get to you. I'll try it one more time. I'm going to grab this ball. Okay. Now, there's reasons why you probably don't do things this way. But on the other hand, if you're coming straight up, it kind of grabbed it now. And you've got now essentially a ball. Um, and you're going to see later on, there's if you had names on each of these things, you probably have a lot of great abilities. Once again, you're going to take now and take that, right click, hold a make group. And now this is actually acting more like a ball. Uh, it acts the same as this, but this then gives me the ability within this ball, if I go ahead and explode it, or not even that, I can go inside this ball and start erasing things out. And now, which you'll see, I'm going to go ahead and view, turn off uh, the face style, so the x-ray. Now, in fact, I have something that I can hold on a stick. Great story the other day about Ted Danson when he was a kid. Ted Danson, uh, cheers, now CSI. Um, but when he was a kid, he, he was a, uh, his dad was a professor, and he found a human skull. So kind of a weird story. Watching Letterman, one of the great things. You notice when I put this together, I didn't quite do it right. You see the little twist error there? You'd want to go back and fix that. But right now when I modeled this, it is actually something with a hole. All right, so that's one way to do it. We'll do it again by slices. Um, but I'll turn on, convert this over to another machine and, and double check this. But this will work. Um, it will now act like a ball, and it will act like a ball with a void in it. Thanks for listening. This is Silence Did Good.